So what's the difference between a religion and a cult, and how can you tell the difference? Well, let's first define religion. Uh, A religion would be some kind of organized system of belief and practice that uh, really tries to answer life's most fundamental and significant questions. What is real? Uh, Does God exist? What is the purpose of life? How should I live my life? Is there a particular God and, and how am I supposed to be devoted to him or follow him or it or her or whatever you think it is? And so that's what religion would be. And of course, it's hard to get a definition of religion that includes every single aspect, but we know that this would include the beliefs, it would include the rituals or the behaviors, the practices. It might include the traditions, the various holidays or feasts, or all, all of those different aspects. But there's some kind of organization to them, and those, that the organization is centered around certain beliefs that we have about the ultimate, about ultimate reality. And that would be a religion. And there's various religions that would fall under this category, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, right? These would be the major uh, world religions. But then you have cult. What is a cult? Well, I think a helpful way to think about cult is that a cult is a, is a parasite on a larger religion. And so you have a cult of Christianity. You have different cults of Islam. You have different offshoots from these larger religions. And you've got to have the larger religion in place for there even to be such a thing as a cult. So for instance, think about Mormonism. Mormonism is often described as a cult. That word is used for Mormons. And of course, sometimes Mormons will take offense to that characterization. But we can use the term cult in two distinct ways. First, there's what you might call a theological cult. The, the, the cultish behavior has to do with the theology or the beliefs. And so the cult will take, uh, will adopt the beliefs of that larger religion, but will then change them in very fundamental ways. And what you end up having is a radical departure from the original beliefs. So in Mormonism, there is a view that uh, there is a heavenly father. Uh, that God is our Heavenly Father, and that Jesus exists, and He's our Savior, and the Holy Spirit exists, right? So there are some similarities there. But when you dig deeper, what you discover is there's actually a radical departure from Orthodox Christian views. So yes, God is our Heavenly Father in Mormonism, but where it departs from Christianity is that you have a view that God was once a man, just like you and me. And he worshiped his own God who created him. And then he eventually progresses and becomes a God and is awarded his own universe, which he is ruling over now. And he has his own goddess wife and they're procreating and they're having spirit children. And you and I are those spirit children, right? Those are the beliefs of Mormonism. Uh, Jesus is the literal firstborn son of the heavenly parents. Uh, Lucifer is the secondborn. And so they're spirit brothers. And then you and I come eventually down the road, and so we're spirit brothers and sisters of Jesus. Okay, now at this point, I'm not even assessing the truth or falsity of such claims. All I'm doing is describing them. And as we describe them, we can see, okay, this is a radical departure from Orthodox, historic Orthodox Christian belief, where God has never been a man God has always been God from all eternity. And if God has always been God from all eternity, then he was not a created being. And God doesn't have a wife. And Jesus is the second member of the Trinity, not the literal firstborn son of heavenly parents, right? And so notice, you you have Mormonism as a theological cult. It takes some of the beliefs of that larger religion, but then fundamentally transforms them so that it's not the same thing as the larger parent religion. And that's what we mean by a cult of Christianity. Now, you also have the term cult used in a sociological sense, right? We talk about sociology. We're talking about the, the study of society and cultural influences and that kind of thing. And so 
you have a sociological definition of cult, where a cult might include, you know, some kind of authoritarian leader, and there is blind allegiance to that leader, and that leader gets to dictate kind of all of the rules and boundaries for that group. And it's not merely a, you know, a sacred text like the Bible that, you know, has divine origins, but this person speaks on behalf of God themselves, and they have authoritarian rule. And followers then, the adherents, are supposed to, you know, follow strictly everything that this person says. And if not, then there are certain punishments that are in play for some control of the group. And those are different aspects, sociological aspects of a cult. This is where sometimes the theological definition of cult gets mixed up with the sociological definition of cult, and a group like the Mormons will say, please, please, please don't call us a cult, because it has all of this other sociological baggage. And when we think of cult in that sense, we're thinking of actually a smaller subgroup of Mormonism, like the FLDS, or the Fundamentalist Latter-day Saints. Uh, Someone like Warren Jeffs, who was this prophet in the FLDS church who exercised absolute control, uh, who actually even abused uh, women and and female children and took them as young brides and controlled the group and lived in a compound in Colorado City on the border of Utah and Arizona, right? And eventually was arrested for all of his criminal activity. Okay, so... We sometimes will then kind of say the word cult, and that's what we're referring to, but it's not the same thing as a theological cult. You can be a a theological cult. You can kind of be a parasite on the larger religion and not also have the sociological uh, characteristics of a cult. So, for instance, those Mormons who are part of the larger LDS church, the Salt Lake City-based church, would be theologically a cult in that they borrow from Christianity, but aren't sociologically a cult where they don't have that kind of authoritarian leadership or they don't have, you know, these strict boundaries that they follow. There's freedom that they have. They're very normal citizens. And so when those get mixed up, you'll have Mormons who say, no, don't call us a cult. And I wouldn't use the word cult with a Mormon anyway because of, you know, the baggage that comes with it. But I think it's helpful for us in thinking about the difference between a religion and a cult uh, getting clear definitions to help us see that you got to have a religion prior to having any kind of cult. The cult ends up borrowing from that larger religion and is a subgroup of that. <laughs> 